So here we're gonna look at a solution to a Putnam problem. This is from the 2014 exam and it is question B2. So we wanna suppose that we have a function from the closed interval one, three into the closed interval negative one, one. So what I mean by that is that the domain of the function is one, three, and then the codomain is negative one, one. Well, that really tells us that this function is bounded below by negative one and above by positive one then the function also satisfies this rule, the integral from one to three of f of x dx equals zero. And then our goal is to determine how large the integral from one to three of f of x over x can be. And so I'm gonna give you guys a hint to maybe try this problem and then we'll look at a solution. So we wanna split this integral from one to three of f of x over x into several integrals subject to a parameter. And then maybe we can tweak that parameter until we get some sort of maximum for this value. And I should say that along your way of tweaking this into several integrals, one of those integrals should somehow take advantage of this fact that the integral from one to three of f of x dx is equal to zero. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go with the hints and we'll come back with a solution. So hopefully that hint was helpful. Now we're ready to look for a solution. So let's start with our goal expression. So that's the integral from one to three of f of x over x dx. Now we wanna manipulate this so that we can easily place something above it, which it can be easily shown to be bound above by some number. And like I said in the hint, this something that we're going to initially put above it will depend on some parameter. So the very first thing that I wanna do is add zero. So I wanna add zero by adding one and subtracting one to the numerator here. So let's see what that gives us. We've got this integral from one to three of f of x plus one minus one over x dx. Great, so nothing fancy. Now what I wanna do is break this up into two integrals, one integral from one to a number, and then an integral from that number to three, but I want some control over that number, so I'm gonna set it equal to something that we're gonna kind of assume is a variable for a bit. So let's go ahead and take t to be a variable in the open interval one to three, and now notice that allows us to split this up into the integral from one to t of f of x plus one minus one over x dx plus the integral from t to three of f of x plus one minus one dx over x dx. Okay, good. So now what I'm gonna do is split parts off of this that I know how to deal with. So I know how to deal with this one over x, and I know how to deal with this negative one over x. So let's maybe go ahead and split that off. So maybe, how do we know to split this part off instead of something else? Well, I think that's just like playing around with this expression until we see what works. So I've got the integral from one to t of one over x dx plus the integral from t to three of negative one over x dx. So I'll just put that minus sign out front. Great, and then what I have left over is the integral from one to t of f of x minus one over x dx plus the integral from t to three of f of x plus one over x dx. So it may seem like we've got something super convoluted here, but notice if we put it all back together, we will arrive at our goal integral again. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and make sure that we know what this is. We can easily take that antiderivative. So notice here we get the natural log of x evaluated at t and one. So that's gonna be the natural log of t. I don't need absolute values here because t is positive. Natural log of one is zero, so we don't need to worry about that. And then next here, we have minus the natural log of x evaluated at three and t. So the fact that we're evaluating it at t in the lower bound, that will turn that into a positive, which uh, gives us a two in front of this natural log of t, and then we have minus natural log of three. So I should say that's what happens to these integrals right here. 
Now we wanna take care of these last two terms, and this is pretty tricky, so let's go ahead and sketch it out. So we know the codomain of our function f is negative one to one. So what that tells us is that f of x is between negative one and one. But we can easily put that in terms of something being bigger than or equal to zero or less than or equal to zero by adding or subtracting one. So notice that that means f of x plus one is bigger than or equal to zero, and f of x uh, minus one is less than or equal to zero. Great. So now next, that tells us that f of x plus one over x is bigger than or equal to zero, and f of x minus one over x is less than or equal to zero. Again, because we know x is coming from one to three here, given that that's the domain of our function. Now, next, we wanna look at the cases when each of these are applicable. So notice we're looking at f of x plus one on the interval t to three. So in other words, that is when x is bigger than t. So let's notice if x is bigger than or equal to t, then dividing by x is going to give you something smaller than dividing by t. So in other words, we have f of x plus 1 over x is going to be less than or equal to f of x plus 1 over t. And so that's going to take care of this second integral right here. Now let's maybe talk a little bit about this first integral, and we're gonna do something fairly similar here. So in this case, x is less than or equal to t. So x is less than or equal to t. But now, since x is smaller than t, when I replace one over x with one over t, given the fact that we're dealing with something that is less than or equal to zero, I get an inequality going in the same direction. So I have f of x minus one over x is less than or equal to f of x minus one over t. So that's exactly how I will replace those last two integrals. So I'm gonna change this equal sign into a less than or equal to and replace those two integrals with the f of x plus one over t and the f of x minus one over t. So let's go ahead and do that. We have plus the integral from one to t of f of x minus one over t dx plus the integral from t to three of f of x plus one over t dx. Good. And so that is so far an upper bound in terms of this parameter t of our goal integral. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring this up and we'll move on. So on the last board, we noticed that if we took t to be a parameter between one and three, we had the following inequality, in other words, an upper bound for our goal integral. So this integral from one to three of f of x over x dx was less than or equal to two natural log of t minus natural log of three plus the integral one to t of f of x minus one over t plus the integral from t to three of f of x plus one over t dx. And I should say that with respect to these integrals, t is a constant, so I can just go ahead and factor that one over t out. And that's exactly what I'll do in this first step. So we're gonna have this is equal to two natural log of t minus the natural log of three, and then we'll have plus one over t, and then let's see what's left over. Maybe we can put some stuff together. We've got the integral from one to t of f of x, and the integral from t to three of f of x. So we can mash that together to give us the integral from one to three of f of x dx. And then next, we have the integral from one to t of negative one dx. So we can maybe write that as minus the integral from one to t of dx. And then finally, we have the integral from t to three dx, like that. Okay, now we can use this hypothesis that we haven't used yet that says the integral from f of, of f of x from one to three is equal to zero. So that's gonna allow us to zero all of this out. And then let's see what we're left with. So we've got two natural log of t minus natural log of three plus one over t. 
And now those remaining integrals are fairly simple. So we've got minus t minus one plus three minus t. So now let's see if we can simplify this at all. So that's gonna give us two natural log of t minus natural log of three plus, so I think we're gonna have four over t. So that's from this minus minus one plus three and then this one over t here. So we've got four over t and then we're gonna have minus two. And that's from this minus t minus another t, that's minus two t over t, so we get that. So let's see what we've got. We've got our goal expression, the integral from one to three of f of x dx is always less than or equal to this expression involving t, where t is some parameter coming from one to three. So now here's something that's a bit tricky. We know that our goal expression is always less than or equal to this. So it's less than or equal to this for all values of t. So that means the maximum that this can be will be the minimum of this expression. So if I set this equal to a function f of t, that rephrases my goal as finding the minimum of this expression. Then that means that this expression is as small as possible but the largest that our goal can be will be the smallest that this can be. Okay, so we're gonna find the minimum of this just using standard calculus one. So in other words, we're gonna use the first and the second derivative test. So let's go ahead and take the first derivative. So notice that capital F prime is going to be two over T minus four over T squared, just by the standard um, calculus rules. Now we wanna find the critical points, which means we will set this equal to zero. We'll multiply both sides of this equation by T squared. Notice T is non-zero because it's between one and three, so we're okay in all accounts there. That gives us two T minus four equals zero, or T equals two. That tells us that a possible maximum or minimum can occur at t equals two. Now we've got two choices. We can either use the extreme value theorem to test our function at one, three, and two to see that this two actually gives a minimum, or we can use the second derivative test. So let's go ahead and use the second derivative test. So let's take the second derivative of this capital F function and notice that that is gonna give us minus two over t squared plus eight over t cubed. Then setting t equal to two, in other words, finding f double prime of two, we'll see that we will get negative one fourth plus one, that is strictly bigger than zero. So if we've got the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive, that means that we have a minimum at t equals two. So just to reiterate, we've got our goal expression is less than or equal to this thing involving t for all values of t, including the value of t that makes it a minimum. The minimum is when t equals two, so that means that this goal expression is always less than or equal to this where we have plugged in t equals two. So maybe I'm just gonna go ahead and erase this bottom of the board because we're gonna need some of these calculations, but I will insert t equals two into this spot. So, so far we've determined that our goal integral is always less than or equal to two times the natural log of two minus the natural log of three. We went through a lot of things in order to get there, but that's what we ended up with. Now what we wanna show is that we can in fact achieve this maximum value by carefully choosing the function f. So I wanna maybe go back up here and notice that this integral here, the integral from one to t, well now we know that t is equal to two, so we can replace those with two, that this thing is always less than or equal to zero. 
And then furthermore, we know this integral right here, which is the integral from t to three of f of x plus one over, now that's two, we know that that thing is always bigger than or equal to zero. Since we know that this two natural log of two minus the natural log of three is the maximum possible value, that will be achieved when each of these integrals is exactly equal to zero. So that's our new goal, is to find a function that makes those integrals exactly equal to zero. But that's actually not too hard. We can just set f of x equal to the following piecewise function. So it's gonna be equal to one if x is on the interval one to two, and it's gonna be equal to negative one is if x is on the interval two to three. And maybe we have to let one of those include two and the other one not include two. So we'll just kind of do that at random. And now what we can check is that this function indeed allows our goal integral to achieve its maximum possible value of this two natural log of two minus natural log of three. And that's a good place to stop.